told you it would be a little bit more complicated. So here we go, hammocks 2.0. slightly more complicated is that we're adding a tarp this time. We talked about these in our tarp setup videos and in here it's the same 3x3 three three, but you can use tarp and like keep it in a dry bag and just make it back a little bit easier. What we're going to look for are four trees, two of which are going to attach guidelines from the tarp and the suspension system of the hammock the other two just to tie out the rest of our tarp. Let's go see what we spot. First thing we need to do is attach our guys to the tarp. Because this is the one that we're using for our freestanding shelters, as we already know, it's not got them attached. So we'll do that and then we'll make a start. So all we're doing is putting a sheet bend in the eyelet. Quick stop and that figure of eight on the end of each line. That's been repeated on all four corners. Now we're so on. now all we're going to do is tie two opposite corners to the two trees behind me, above head height. You can nearly see on that one, we've got one attached. The wind's getting up, but that's just going to stop it from blowing away. Now we're going to go and attach the other one. Nothing too flash, just a little more in hitch. So then that way we can adjust its tension whenever we need to. As you can see, that wind's getting up and that's not going to make for a nice nice sleep. So what we're going to need to do now is anchor down the other two corners. Let's go. Last time, all we're going to do is stick that mooring hitch on there to stop this from happening. And we'll see these two are going to be lower than the original first two that we tied. Act like our pitch of our roof, which is going to stop any rain from running onto us, hopefully. So I've just hanged up the excess there just so no one falls over. Oh, tighten that up. All we've got to do is cinch everything up now. So we can see now we've got our diamond pitch up. This little slope here is going to protect any rain from getting on us. What's going to happen is this is going to ensure that everything rips off towards the side. So now, let's get the hammock back out. So the wind's kind of getting up behind us and we're determined to do this. So now we'll crack on with the hammock. Last time, the suspension system that I showed you, we've, I'd already made some alterations to it, tied those over hands in and it was designed for those two specific ones. This is not. What comes with this one are some tree huggers. So let's have a little look at those. So this one, again, is another nylon hammock. Stole this one off the wife. Let's be honest, it's a little bit better. And like we were saying, this one comes with tree huggers. What these are, are again, just inch thick straps. At one side, you have got one loop stitched into it, triple stitched. And at the other side, there are multiple. What's called a daisy chain. What we're going to do is we're going to take the end that's got just one loop stitched into it and we're going to pass this around up the head height. Remember we want to maintain that kind of 30 degrees. Then with this side, all we're going to do is pass it through that loop. Pass the loop around. The other side is just going to feed through there and pull. Just like that lark's head on the last one. Then if we pull that, cinch that down tight, we don't have a problem. For a little bit more stability, if you like, we could wrap it around another time and pass that back through. Based on the distance of the trees that we've selected, I don't think we're going to have the length on that. So we're going to leave that one there, rinse and repeat on the other side. So again, just like last time, this one's been packed, so the carabiners are at the top. And that way, when we come to strap all this together, the actual hammock is never going to touch the floor. These daisy chains 
how these are going to work are just like the overhand knots that we tied in the other one. So if we just take the one furthest away from the end of it, clip our carabiner to, that's one side done. And we'll walk it all the way to the other side, give it a go, and then again we're going to start addressing that angle and any imbalanced issues that we may or may not be having. So now we've done that, I can see that this is a little bit tight. You remember last time we talked about wanting that sag. So, the reason we've clipped it on the one furthest away is that we know that we can move it back down. So I'm going to unclip it from there, move it down one until we've got that angle that we really want. So there we are. We're pretty much at the point where we were in the last video. This hammock has got something built into it that the other one doesn't. Like we were saying, this one is the wag, so it's a little bit more flash. This one has got an integral bug net put in. So we might as well put that up while we're here. So, the other thing that's quite cool about these tree huggers is if it rains, which we're about to get a ton of, the excess in the line where we've put the carabiner is going to act like a drip line. So any residual rainwater that is attached to our suspension system is just going to drip, run down and drip down here, keeping our hammock nice and dry. So while we're here, let's get that bug net up. Okay, so we're in. Our bug net's up. Our shelf is above us. We've maintained that kind of 30 degree, 40 degree angle for our suspension. Let's give it a little test before we move on. Marvellous. These little bug nets are great. They don't take any more extra setting up. And if you don't want to use it, all we need to do is not suspend it and getting the hammock with that facing down. It's great, they make a great little addition. And the wife loves them. As you can see in here, the wind's getting up and it's quite cold. And it's about to start raining. We talked last time about being kind of exposed when we're in hammock camping. And that's very true. Because we're kind of out in the open and there's no sides to our little setup whatsoever, when the wind does get up, it's absolutely surrounding us. It's above, it's below. So what we might want to put on is like a little bit of an under blanket. An under blanket is kind of like a sleeping bag for the hammock, which attaches at the carabiners and runs underneath. It's gonna, just gonna give you an extra layer of protection with our bare back exposed towards the element. Ads on the table, I've lost the under blanket. So we're gonna see if we can have a little bit of a workaround. First, we're gonna get an all weather sleeping bag. Back, it started raining as predicted and that wind's really getting up. So we're really kind of testing the theory here. So we've got our all season, our four seasons sleeping bag. We're going to open that up and we're going to lay that in our hammock. Feel now, even though I am dressed up to the nines, I start to feel quite chilly, especially when that wind gets up. So the sleeping bag is going to trap the air around us inside the bag and underneath, in between us and the hammock itself, providing us with that extra layer of warmth. However, still could be quite chilly. So, once we've got the bag out, and that goes in there, what we're going to put around the bag is this bivvy. The bivvy is really cool. Imagine a sleeping, imagine a raincoat for your sleeping bag. It's made of these really cool man-made materials that mean we're going to trap extra air in between the us and the bag, the bag and the bivvy, and then the bag and the bivvy and the hammock. So, let's try and put it all together, shall we? Before we do, do you remember those little pockets that the hammock itself is attached to? It comes in, great for storage space so we don't lose any of these bags. Getting in the bivvy could be a job in itself. So first thing we've done, we've got in our in sleeping bag, half zipped up. Then the bivvy is just a big carrier bag. Put that out of feet while we're sat in the hammock. Pull that up. And we'll just pull it all up together in one move. Okay, so we're in the bag, we're in the bivvy. Let's get laid down. Okay, so I am now sweating. It is red hot. It's quite cold outside. The ambient air temperature today I think it's like 7, 8 degrees, especially that wind feels more like hot. And I've got a bit of feet on. So we are here. Bug net closed. We're ready for a good night's sleep. All I forgot the pillow. Like you can see, there's maybe a little bit more to it than there is at first glance. It just appears to come in and bring it up the hammock. All sorts of good. 
goes into it to make sure that one, you're comfortable, two, it's enjoyable. Come to the thing, switch around, and as you can see, it's dead easy to do with that bug net. All I've done is unclip it and lay it on the other side. There's loads of different hammocks that's available, and that's good. that goes tenfold for bags, for bivvies. Maybe we'll do a little bit of gear review in the uh, next couple of weeks. Maybe see if we can make some recommendations for anyone coming to the either camp setup or to the overnight camp in July. Sorry, something I can't wait either. But until next time, we'll go explore.